Hey guys, we're back at the airport again and we just went through security and it went so smoothly. I was even able to bring my bottle of water so I don't know how that's possible but it is. Everything's possible nowadays guys, even bringing water into uh, the airport which I always thought was illegal but yeah I'm just waiting for my friends. I don't know why it takes so long for them but for me it was just like smooth we have three hours till we departure so i will be editing during that time why is he running what, what the hell boy he just ran past me <laughs> i got holiday jacks because it's convenient it's easy the plant-based burger is actually really nice oh, i thought my camera was blurry turns out it's just my eyes you want? <laughs> I have to eat burgers because I'm from Hamburg. Oh my god! <laughs> so tired. I just got ready for bed. I brushed my teeth, I flossed, and now I'm gonna keep working on my video because this whole time, this whole entire time, I wasn't able to do any voice recording because there were people in my room and I had no like zero privacy in the hostel so I never found a quiet spot so the only option I have right now is to do the voiceover at the airport there are not many people here anyway ew my laptop is so dirty I think it's enough editing for today and I'm gonna go back to the couch and see if my friends are already sleeping I I assume so Hal, I think I can see my friend still awake like what is he doing at 2 30 a.m at an airport. Is that him? Yeah, I think that is him. Boy, why are you still awake? Yeah, we should go to bed. Yeah. By bed, I mean the couch. Yeah. <laughs> but it's our camp. twice. Once by a baby who hit me on the head and the second time when these ladies behind me took a photo while sitting on the couch. So far I'm actually doing okay. Not too bad. Tired but actually not bad. Place item in the bagging area. Okay, this, this is gonna be my room for the next month. These are the things I bought and I'm gonna prepare some overnight oats for tomorrow for lunch. Mm. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back. Um, thank you for watching till this part. I guess you want to know the answers to all your juicy questions and I read all of them. Today I'm gonna answer all of them, every single one, and I'm gonna be transparent and honest with you. So let's get into it. How much did you save up to come to Australia and what kind of job did you have in Germany? I didn't save up a lot, maybe you can tell. I guess I came with like 3k, I think 3k in euros. 
which is around 5k in Australian dollars. My job in Germany, um, I had many jobs, but I'm gonna tell you about the recent one before I moved. So I worked as a tutor in many different schools as a freelancer and I taught English and German. What are the current job opportunities in Australia? I wish I knew, I'm still on the lookout. I mean, I have a job now on a strawberry farm, but so I don't know, I'm still on the lookout. How would you describe your fashion style? Do you have any favorite clothing brands? I would describe my fashion style as extremely boring and uncreative and I wish I had a good sense of fashion and I'm still trying to find it. But yeah, I have a few favorite brands that I can't afford like Ralph Lauren. When will you be moving back to Sydney? Once I finish the three months of required work for my visa. Honestly, just a lock. If the hostels have lockers, it should be fine. When you have the same people in one room over a period of time, you kind of get to know everyone. You know who you can trust and who you can't trust. At some point I was like, I know these people now. I know they wouldn't steal anything. So sometimes I wouldn't even lock my locker, which I should have done still. So once I find a new job that counts towards my visa, I will be moving and I'm, open to move wherever but i like queensland i was making friends in australia i heard it's hard to make friends with australians but i don't know because i only have international friends here because of the whole backpacker thing would you prefer to work in sydney if you could yes i think it's easier to get a job there honestly i just want to work at subway do you plan to visit melbourne one day of course! When I come to Melbourne, I want to have the creamiest, richest vegan ramen. And if you know any ramen place that offers vegan ramen, please let me know in the comments. Do you think you could call Australia home? Maybe I wouldn't call it home, but I, it feels like home. It felt like home from the first day. Australians are a lot, a lot more talkative than Germans. Germans, when it's not necessary, when you're not in like a certain situation, they won't usually talk like we won't do small talk and the only small talk we do is talking about the weather complaining about trains and how late they are complaining about the weather complaining about literally anything if you want to get along with germans let's say like old germans you just need to complain about the weather and how it's always too cold or too hot and it's never good enough and they will love you australians on the other hand from my experience they talk about their occupation they, they talk about their kids, they talk about their family and the culture. When I say I like the Australian culture, people are like, what culture? But I don't know, I just like the vibe. I would say I like like the energy here. It's very different and I think Australians don't know that until they actually leave Australia. And also some other things in terms of differences between Germany and Australia, the job market. If you watch my videos, you know that I severely underestimated the job market in Australia because in Germany it is pretty easy to find a job even without a degree. I mean, I was able to work as a full-time tutor without actually any qualifications. But here, holy shit, I spent $200 to do this barista course because I thought it would help me to get a job. No, the barista course is nothing here. And I didn't know that before and I learned from it. I would say getting a job in Germany is really easy, especially if you have a degree. The chances are that you're gonna, gonna get a job in that field. But in Australia, even if you have qualifications without work experience, nobody's gonna take you. Oh yeah, and if you wanna work at, let's say McDonald's, for example, in Germany, you literally just walk into the store, you ask for a job and you can pretty much start the next day or the next week. And in Australia, the application process is so long, even for like these kind of jobs. And I'm not complaining here. I'm not trying to say anything negative about Australia. I'm just comparing because you wanted to have the comparison. What made you want to come to Australia? Definitely the weather and also the language. really wanted to live in, a, in an English speaking country and also the nature and the beaches and like Australia just has it all. What is your favorite meal? Right now it's vegan ramen. I'm obsessing over it. I'm thinking about it every day and I can eat it every day. When did you become vegan and the reason behind it? I'm actually not vegan and I never claimed to be vegan. I do cook a lot of vegan dishes because I really enjoy them and it really helps the environment. But I've been pescatarian for the past 11 years. I watched a lot of documentaries on the meat industry. When I was young, it was really disturbing to me. I'm not against people who eat meat. My family eats meat. After 11 years, you just, like you kind of calm down and you accept the things as they are and you're not too radical about it, I guess. Are you single? Mm. The answer to it is, no, 
I'm actually not single. I have a boyfriend. He was born and raised in Australia, in Sydney, and this is also the reason why I want to go back to Sydney. I have received quite a few messages from people asking me on dates. When people DM me with literally no profile picture and no photos on their profile, it is kind of alarming and I don't know who you are. You might know a lot about me now, but for me, you're still a stranger and if I met you on the street, I wouldn't know who you are. So please understand that I won't do any meetups and that I'm in a really happy, fulfilling relationship. How did you get Australian citizenship? Do I look like? Does it seem like I have, like if you watched any of my videos, you would know that I clearly don't have an Australian citizenship and that I'm very far from getting one. So um, maybe watch my videos first. Your accent doesn't come across as German English. What influence do you think developed your accent? Yeah, I actually noticed a lot of people get confused by it. I was born and raised in Germany. So I think I do have a German accent with a mix of maybe American. I grew up watching a lot of American YouTubers and a lot of American shows, like a lot of American influence in general. Also, I used to date an American and I think during that time my accent improved, got maybe a bit more American and I lost a bit of the German accent. What music do you listen to? Also not a question, but I like the music in your videos. Oh, thank you. I think it's really like I have a lot of different songs in my videos. I listen to a bunch of stuff. I would say Tame Impala. I really like him. I like the old albums from The Weeknd. And I also really like classical music because I play piano. I really like Chopin and Beethoven on Spotify. I think two years ago, I was one of the top 1% of Chopin listeners. Who's one stranger you've met in Australia that you remember most? That's such a cute and creative question. I don't think there was one stranger in particular. I think actually almost all Australians I've met were really nice and helpful and I'll forever be grateful for all the people that helped me. Was it hard to learn English? Also, how long did you study it for? Also, is it really true that Germany is full of German people? It was not really hard to learn English because we learn it from third grade on. I had a lot of international friends that helped me to improve my English, but sometimes I forget that I actually made a conscious effort to learn English. I think now a lot of it is just passive. Like I don't make the conscious effort anymore to learn English. And yes, Germany is full of German people, but it is also full of people who migrated to Germany. I think Germany is the country who takes up most immigrants from all of Europe. It is very mixed now, but maybe not as mixed as Australia. I I think Australia has even more migrants. Hi, lovely question. Do you have any plans to move to other places? Actually, I just wanted to come to Australia and live my life in Sydney and I didn't expect this whole journey to happen. I think this whole job situation brought me to all these places and I think I will be moving a lot more in the next few months because of that. What does the channel name Biggie Boo mean? What is Biggie Boo? <laughs> so Biggie Boo doesn't have a proper meaning. It is just a combination of Biggie, which used to be my nickname in Germany, and Boo. I just thought it sounded better. Some people have their full name as their channel name, and I think it always sounds so serious. And I don't think I'm a really serious person. So I thought Biggie Boo, Biggie Boo, sounds kind of fun. How are things going with your mom since leaving Germany? Things are going great, honestly. We, we get along pretty well and I think she's doing really great. She can go on vacation more often. She's spending that money that she doesn't have to spend on us anymore. <laughs> I will combine these two. Are you full German or a mix? And I also received a similar question on YouTube with someone saying in German, are you Turkish? I know you've been wondering about my ethnicity and the answer is yes. I'm actually full Turkish. My parents migrated to Germany a long time ago. My mom grew up in Germany too. She was born in Turkey, but then she moved to Germany when she was really young, but then they had to move back. Fun fact about her, she actually grew up in Berlin and she went to high school in Berlin. It is known that people from Hamburg always trash talk Berlin and people from Hamburg are really arrogant when it comes to their city. They think they live in the best city in Germany, which actually is true. I think Hamburg is the best city in Germany. But yeah, I would say my family is not really the traditional, typical Turkish family. We have a lot of German influence and I think it comes from my family 
growing up between two cultures. There are a lot of Turkish people who migrated to Germany and there are a lot of stigmas because of that. And growing up, I kind of had to deal with all these questions about my ethnicity and about these stigmas. And most things that people asked me or that they assumed about me were not true. So I could never identify with it. So it really bothered me to be asked these questions. And this gave me a big identity crisis that I still deal with to this day. I still sometimes don't know where I belong. How do your parents feel after you have moved to Australia? and living independently now after some months. Of course she misses me, but I think she's not heartbroken anymore. She made it seem like her life would be over if I moved away, but she's at a very good place. She has a German boyfriend, she's living with him and they're doing really well. Have you ever thought about modeling? Ah, oh, that's very sweet, thank you, but no, I don't think I could ever be a model. Um, I know it might sound contradicting because I do YouTube, but I actually don't feel comfortable taking photos or having people taking photos of me because I feel like I always look weird on them. You should know I'm actually really short. I know I look taller in my videos, people tell me all the time I look really tall, but I'm actually 160, so I think modeling is not a career option for me. What is your favorite beach in Australia? I haven't been to all the beaches yet, so I think it's hard to say, but I guess so far it's Palm Cove, but I think there are better beaches than Palm Cove. What's your study, like your cooking and using chopstick skills? I started when I was 13 by making pancakes and scrambled eggs. These were the only two things I could make and I was worried that I would never be able to survive on my own. I experimented a lot in the kitchen and my grandma is also a really good cook. I was raised by my mom and my grandma, so we were this little family of me, my sister, my mom and my grandma and we lived in one house. And I actually shared a room with my grandma up until I was 15 and we moved to a new place. And then that was the first time I had my own room. Yeah, my grandma definitely also got me into cooking because she cooks everything from scratch and she's a great cook and I just love her and I love her cooking and actually now talking about it, I really miss it. I don't know why, but my hair is always so messy. What's your name? I just don't recall even after watching all the videos. <laughs> First of all, thank you for watching all my videos. And I won't be making my name public because I do want to protect my privacy a little bit. I can see myself living here. I think if I didn't have family in Germany, I would move here in an instant. Like I would, um, I wouldn't think twice about living here for the rest of my life. I don't know about my family and how things would be with them, so this is the only thing that actually holds me back a little bit and why I could still see myself living in Europe. What's your advice for a European moving to Australia for work permanently and how long have you been in Australia now? Oh, it's been five months now. I can't believe it. Well, Australia is really tough, I think, and it is really tough to get an apartment. It's tough to get Get a job not just for backpackers but also for Australians they also struggle a lot don't underestimate Australia in any shape or form just be prepared to work 10 times harder budget your money really well save enough money don't come with too little money you'll end up on the street look for the cheapest hostels in the beginning don't expect too much. Before I, I never thought I could live in a hostel with eight other people in one room for three, four months. But you get used to things and always build a community, try to find friends, try to connect with people, especially backpackers who understand your situation. You will benefit from each other. One person might have a car that will definitely help you to get a job. Try to get an Australian driver's license. Try to get work experience in general in Australia. The job is not too important at first, but you will get a different job more easily if you already prove that you've worked in Australia. If you could go back in time and start your working holiday visa over, what would you do differently? I would have started looking for a job way earlier and I would have taken the job process a lot more serious. I didn't know it was this competitive. I didn't know it was this hard because there is a lot of misinformation online. I also didn't know that you get ripped off on basically every farm and I will be making a video on that too because it's a huge issue. I feel like I should have gone to a small town from the get-go and just try to look for a job and if I can't find something within like a week or two I should have left and looked at another place. How do you stay optimistic during uncertain times? 
I wouldn't say that I'm always optimistic, but one thing I learned is that you really learn a lesson for life. I'm able to share my story online and I'm happy if it helps someone. This kind of keeps me going, but I'm definitely not always optimistic. Which country do you want to be in the next year? Uh, I definitely want to visit Japan and I also want to go back to Korea again. Love for Korean food started when, when I watched a lot of mukbangs online, like on Instagram, and I saw all these delicious meals and I was like, oh my god, I want to try it out. And this is what got me into Korean food. In terms of a favorite K-drama, to be honest, I don't watch a lot of K-dramas unless someone recommends them to me, but I only watched Itaewon Class and Crash Landing on You, and I think they were both good. I think I answered all the questions. I hope so, I hope I didn't forget anything. But if I did, or if you have more questions now after all of this, let me know. I can do another Q&A at some point. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.